So this first lesson of the new unit is on radian measure. Ever since you were studying angles in elementary school, in grade 9, in grade 10, and grade 11, we measured the size of an angle using degrees. But there's actually another unit we're going to learn uh, for grade 12, which is called radians. Uh, essentially, your, the goal is still the same. You want to measure the size of a unit, or sorry, size of the angle, but instead of using degrees, you're using radians. Um, before we talk about radians, we want to talk about the pros and cons of degrees. So one of the advantages of using degrees is because when you communicate with people and you want to tell, talk to people about the size of an angle, and let's say you say the size of an angle is uh, 45 degrees, it's very easy for someone to visualize that. It's, uh, if you vision, I don't know, 180 degrees, you, you, you think of the protractor right away. Or 306 degrees, you can think of the circle uh, right away. But if you were to say uh, one radian, people would look at it and say, well, what's the size of that angle? It's because we, we usually don't use radians in everyday language. So most people are, are very um, used to using degrees. Um, so that's one of the advantages. But unfortunately, there's a big disadvantage to degrees because there is no mathematical basis of degree measure. So one of the angles you should know about when we talk about degrees is 360 degrees. So let's write that down, 360 degrees. Why is 360 degrees special? Because that is one full term. When you think of 360 degrees, that is one full revolution. But if you think about it, could we not have chosen a different number? Could we not have chosen 100 degrees to be one full term? Uh, how about 200 degrees? In fact, I would argue 100 degrees is a really good choice for one full revolution because we have a base 10 number system. So we should think, where did 360 degrees come from? So back in the day, um, we had these calendars called the Persian calendars, and they had 360 uh, days in that calendar. And back in the day, people also studied stars, and they would look at stars rotating about the North Star. And these stars would rotate about the North Star, uh, they would complete one full revolution in about a year. So these stars were rotating approximately one degree per day. So they said 360 degrees is the whole revolution, is one full revolution. And that's where 360 degrees comes from. But unfortunately, there's not, there's not other, like there's no mathematical basis in terms of degrees. So when we talk about radians, we're going to define what a radian is. And then you'll see that there is a mathematical idea behind, the, behind radians. So that's why it's actually very beneficial to use radians over degrees uh, moving forward. But nonetheless, I really want you to understand it's just another unit. Okay. All right. So what is a radian? Before we talk about radians, we're going to study this picture here. Uh, we have some fancy math words. We have the word subtend, and that means opposite to, an angle or a side. A sector is a plane figure bounded by two radii and the included arc of a circle. So if I were to color in the sector here, this is a sector. This is our sector of the circle. Okay, you can think of it as like a slice of a pizza. So this R is obviously the radius of the circle. Theta is called the central angle uh, that we're working with here. So theta is the central angle, and A is the arc length. So we have three things. We have the radius, we have the central angle, and we have the arc length. All together, we use, if you use arc length and the radius um, and theta, we can come up with the definition of a radian. So the size of an angle is expressed in radians depends on three things, what we just said, the arc length, the central angle, and the radius. So here's a definition of, of the angle and radians. The size of the angle and radians is the ratio between the arc length and its radius. This is the key idea here. The ratio between the arc length 
and its radius. So the central angle in radians, arc length over the radius. Now what we have here is, what if the arc length is the same as the radius? The arc length is the same length of the radius. Same as the length of the radius, if that's the case, you have one radian. Okay, so now that we know uh, what it means to define an angle in radians, so once again, it's a ratio of the arc length to the radius. We want to know how to convert from degrees to radians, or radians to degrees, either way. So here's how we go about it. Consider the arc length created by an angle of 360 degrees. The arc length must be 2 pi r because it is the length of the circumference of the circle. So let's think about that. If the arc length is the entire circle, right, because the angle is 360 degrees, the arc length must be the circumference of the circle. So if we study the definition of the radian, ratio of arc length to the radius, so if the central angle is 360 degrees, then the arc length is the circumference and the radius is still a radius. So the ratio of the arc length to the radius is 2 pi r over r. And we can simplify that relationship and you get 2 pi. So what we have here is 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So if 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees, we can simplify that by saying pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So let's fill in this blank though. When the central angle is 360 degrees, the arc length is, or the arc length is the circumference. Because it's a whole circle. So if we can go back to our diagram here, imagine if the arc length was a, was a whole circle was 360 degrees, then the arc length must be the entire circumference. So there we go. By letting the central angle be 360 degrees, which means the arc length has to be the circumference of, circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, we've developed a way to go from degrees to radians. Yes, you can say 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, but uh, simply, you can put it as 180 degrees equals pi radians. You can simplify that relationship. So that is our conversion factor. So we can go from radians. Uh, so here we're going to go from degrees to radians. So we're going to take 20 degrees and multiply it by pi over 180 degrees. Because that's our conversion factor. 180 degrees is exactly the same as pi radians. And you won't put degrees in the denominator because you want to cancel out those units. So if you do the math, you get pi over nine. So 20 degrees is exactly the same as pi over nine radians. What about 225 degrees? Same idea. Find that conversion factor. So pi over 180 degrees if you simplify it, you'll get 5 pi over 4. So 225 degrees is exactly the same as 5 pi over 4 radians. Just as a side note, you will need to memorize 5 pi over 4 radians. Uh, that's one of the angles that we work with, not a lot, but we'll work with it frequently. Um, because uh, in grade 11, you learn how to find uh, the exact value of for example, sine 225 degrees is one of the special angles that you work with. Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves. 225 degrees is equal to 5 pi over 4 radians. All right, so in these two examples, we went from degrees to radians, but of course, you can go the other way around. Pi over 4. So this time, I want to go from radians to degrees. So we're going to go 108 degrees over pi radians. This is a conversion factor. This is, you basically have to memorize that if you want to go from radians to degrees or degrees to radians. 
If you do the math, you get pi over 4. Oops, sorry. You get 45 degrees. Okay, one more here. 1.75 radians to degrees. I'm going to approximate this one. You can keep it exact, but I just want to give you a feel for what 1.75 radians is. So about 100 point let's do 3 degrees. 100.3 degrees. So 1.75 radians is approximately 100.3 degrees. I also want to go I want to show you what is 1 radian. Okay? So what is 1 radian? One radian in degrees, so I'm going to take one and multiply it by 180 degrees over pi, because that's our conversion factor. That is approximately 57.3 degrees. Okay, so one radian is approximately 57.3 degrees. All right, uh, before we move on to the next example, I just want to go over this idea. Um, to personally, this is no different from me asking you any other question in, in, which requires you to go from one unit to another unit. So if I said, uh, what is 10 centimeters to millimeters? Okay, another way of going it to be, uh, let's see, uh, five dozens to eggs. So we're talking about dozens of eggs, five dozens of eggs. So how many eggs are we talking about? I'll do one more for those chemistry kids. Uh, two moles. How many grams? Let's do two moles of H2O, of water. Okay. So I'm really hoping you can answer the first question. 10 centimeters, you should know how many millimeters that is. I'm not going to answer it because I, I really don't want the answer. I just want you to know that you can only find the answer to this question. You can only know how many millimeters there are in 10 centimeters if you know the conversion factor. You can only know how many eggs there are in five dozen of eggs if you know what's or how many eggs are in one dozen. You need to know the conversion factor. For this one, I know this one's a little more complicated, but the idea is the same. I can only tell you what is the mass uh, if I know how to convert, what's the molar mass? How many grams is one mole of water? So I know that I, they look different, but the idea is really the same. So we're not working with uh, millimeters or eggs or moles. We're working with how to measure the size of an angle, which is uh, we learn two ways now. We can use degrees or we can use radians. All right, and by the way, in this unit, it's all radians essentially. You can refer back to degrees, but really we're, we want to stick with radians. Okay, let's do the last question here. So electric motor turns at 2000 revolutions per minute. I want to express this angular velocity in radians per second. So this is in revolutions per minute but I want to change it to the units of radians per second. So re angular velocity means I have a point and I'm rotating about that point. So this is spinning actually pretty quickly, 2000 times in a single minute. So what we're going to do is change revolutions to radians. So I need to know that conversion factor and I need to change minutes to seconds. So I need to know that conversion factor as well. All right, so I'm going to write down the units this time. 2,000 revs in one minute, okay? So I'm going to go with the conversion that you are more familiar with. One minute, and I want to change it to seconds. So one minute, we all know that's 60 seconds, okay? So that allows me to cancel the units. Beautiful. So now I have seconds. So if I left it at this calculation, I've went from revolutions per minute to revolutions per seconds, but I don't want revolutions per seconds. 
I want radians per second. So I need to go one revolution. Okay, what should I put here? How many radians in one revolution? One full turn. So that's, that's actually how we learned our conversion factor. Two pi radians. One full turn is two pi radians. Okay, so by the way, radians is considered to be unitless. Uh, but if you really want to show that it's radians, um, you can put RAD. So I'll, I'll do that for you. But really, if you didn't put RAD, it's implied to be radians. Okay. So, let's see. So we're looking at 200 over 3 radians per second. Oops, I forgot the pi. 200 pi over 3 radians per second. All right, so let's summarize everything we did in this unit, uh, in this lesson. So I start off by uh, introducing degree measure again uh, and why it's advantageous to use degrees, but there is really a big pitfall to using degrees because there's no mathematical basis. There's no mathematical definition for, for degree. As opposed to radian, we, we actually have a mathematical definition and that definition was the ratio between the arc length and the radius of the circle. Okay, so we have a formula which allows us to calculate the size of an angle. And once we uh, define what, it, what a radian is, we learn the conversion factor. So we know how to go from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. And we did some examples and we talked about angular velocity. Okay, all right. We're going to have our homework after and uh, you can look at that video.